Okay, so in this webinar, I'm going to be looking at uh, introducing just gamification in general, uh, getting a sense of the definition. We're going to look at some examples of the gamification in Ed, both automatic and manual. Uh, and then we're going to be looking on, I guess, the main focus of the webinar will be the, the big draw, the star bar, the biggest gamification feature in Ed. Uh, so let's get started by looking at some of that introduction to gamification. So what is gamification? Uh, the actual definition is when you add game-like qualities to other areas of activity. So it's not games. Uh, Mario Kart isn't gamification. It, it's, it's just a game. Um, but it's sim taking things like, for example, say you have an employee who's not super excited about doing some compliance training on you know, the, the correct way to wash their hands, for example. What you might do is to make it a bit more fun, add some game-like elements to it, and hopefully they'll be enthusiastic and, and learn something along the way. So just looking at some examples here, I guess just uh, I wanted to really demonstrate that it's not game gamification isn't games, it's just adding these game elements. So something like in Duolingo, for those of you who um, perhaps have used the app to try and learn another language, if you haven't, do, it's great. But uh, Duolingo is a great example of uh, some gamification in encouraging learners to come in and repeat lessons or, or to access the app daily. So it says here, uh, when, when learners come into the app, instead of saying to them, uh, you need to come in every day and complete two lessons, otherwise you won't learn the language. It just it makes it fun. It says after every lesson you get this animation of ten experience points. Uh, you know you want to. It's it's a, it's a half filled progress bar that you just instinctively want to complete. Uh, the birds there telling you you need to uh, get ten more experience to to meet your goal. Um, and it offers you a, a bonus if you get a streak. And this is all just just a, a fun way to kind of psychologically. I'm not going to say manipulate, but uh, manipulate your the, the participants of the app into doing the right thing, into coming in and learning every day so they learn that language. And that's gamification. It's making the kind of dull messages of oh, come here two, day, two times a day to learn your thing into something fun, that earn experience points, level up your language, and, and please the, the bird. Uh, another example would be on Twitter. Uh, it's, it's kind of gamified, quantified, social um I, when you please people you know if you uh post something funny or you post a picture of a dog or you have a good life you, you earn points on twitter and that's that's gamifying social experiences uh so this this user has posted a, a very good dog and has earned a huge amount of points for that and that's gamification uh it's about taking something which uh, it, it, it's encouraging people to come back to the app and keep earning those points uh and that's how twitter gamifies us and again just another example of how it isn't a it isn't games, it's it's adding those game-like qualities, missions, points, achievements into other areas of our life to make them more fun, to encourage people to do what we want them to do, one of those two. So in Ed, uh, just an example, I guess, off the bat, you might have seen on that first screen there, uh, the Daily App Open Rewards. So this is, uh, you know, it's along the same psychological lines as Duolingo. Uh, we want people to be coming into the app every day. Uh, and part of that is, you know, instead of saying again, hey, you know, you've been told to complete lessons every day, we reward them for, for doing that great behavior that we want them to do. We, we say when they come in and they can, um, they see every day, here's your three stars, this happy smiley star face. And it's a reward for their efforts. And they know that if they don't come in every day, then they're going to miss out on that, uh, earning those stars. Uh, and as you can see later, uh, in conjunction with the star bar, that can be a really powerful motivator. So what we want to do is just look at some of these other examples of a gamification there. And I wanted to start with some of this automated gamification. So this is stuff that you, you, you don't have to worry about. It's just there. If you start using it, this gamification is all present. Um, so we'll look something on the left, uh, something very basic. When a learner completes their lesson, we can't, we don't just chuck them out of the lesson and say, thanks for coming. Uh, we give them a nice score animation. It pops up and it tells them how they did. They can see a summary of how they progressed through the lesson where they perhaps didn't do so well. Uh, and again, there's a big button that says, um, hey, re replay the lesson. So uh, if they scored 60% like they did here, and maybe they, they crave earning a bit more points, uh, then they'll pop back into that lesson and try and score better. Uh, and that's, that, that's, that's a huge, um, I guess it's a through line through a lot of Ed's uh, gamification features, is encouraging that self-motivated repetition and exposure to content. Uh, you know, every time that it's uh, that the learner experiences some lessons without your prompting, I mean, that, that saves you time. And also it means that they're understanding the content a lot better because we're getting them to revise and revisit content and we're getting them to memorize it. So 
it's just one example of again some automated gamification it's there it, it's it works in the app now uh the, the little score pops up as they come out of the lesson similarly uh, as learners progress through content they're rewarded with achievements so you can see in this image we have uh, a learner has just uh beaten the 20 star mark and the little sheep pops up and says hey well done you've earned 20 stars so this is a great automated uh, piece of encouragement they also earn achievements for uh, completing lessons completing courses uh, playing at the star bar that sort of thing and learners can go into their profile and see uh, how they're progressing towards uh, completing their uh, their their next level of achievement, so they can go in and see. Oh, I've I've got you know forty two stars now. I can see that I only need eight more stars to get the next achievement, and it encourages them again to look through, see perhaps where they've missed some stars in previous lessons, or you know make sure they come back to tomorrow's lesson so they can earn some more stars. So it's a really nice piece of again automated gamification that's encouraging our learners to come in and revisit content and keep learning. On the right here. Uh, we have an example of something a bit more subtle. Um, as learners are scrolling through their lessons, uh, first of all, they can see how many stars are remaining in each lesson. Uh, so this is really capturing those completionists, the people who uh, they, they want to go and spend stars at the star bar to earn their next prize. They want to get their achievements. Uh, they want to uh, earn a perfect score on their lessons. They can go through and see at a glance um, which lessons they need to revisit, which ones they haven't performed so well in. So if they've earned all that stars, we can take that as read that they understand the content pretty well because learners earn stars by answering questions correctly. Uh, for those lessons where they've got a couple of stars remaining, uh, it, it's it's a really great way to encourage learners to revisit the lessons we, we specifically know that they have struggled with. So in this uh, duration and frequency lesson, the learners still have two stars remaining. Uh, as they see a, a big prize coming at the star bar, they're going to think to themselves, oh, I really want to get as many stars as they, I can. Or as they look at their achievements to see oh, I'm only a couple of stars away from the next achievement, they're going to want to search through their lessons and find those ones where they didn't perform so well in. And we have that self-motivated repetition of content coming in again. Uh, also, what we see on that third screen is the, uh, the progress bar, which um, it is pretty much everywhere nowadays. This is one of the easiest, most effective pieces of, of gamification, uh, so much so that I've included it in the bottom left of the presentation. Um, because what this does, I, people just, they, they can't see an unfinished progress bar and think to themselves, oh, I could I could complete that. It's uh, it, it's it's uh, it's like um, it gets you deep in the mind. So um, we have that in every course. The learner can see at a glance how they're progressing through the course, how many more lessons they need to complete, uh, and they can um, judge themselves how many more days they think it will take for them to complete their content. So also at the end there, uh, what we have is a certificate of completion. And this is a real reward that a learner earns on completing a course, uh, setting this up as as simple as pressing a button saying, yes, I want my learners to earn a certificate of completion. Uh, and then what that means is it's a really nice thing, you know, as the learner progresses through, they're, they're making their way through the progress bar, they're building up their lessons. And once they've finished the, uh, the course, they earn that big, you know, they have that celebration, they get the certificate. It feels really good. And again, it's a nice piece of fun for them to have that reward alongside the real rewards of the prizing. Uh, they get that per course certificate saying, congratulations, you did a great job. And that's, that's, again, it's a piece of gamification because it's just rewarding them for their hard work in the app. It's not just uh, telling them, all right, you know, thanks for completing the course, off you go. Uh, it's, it's really recognizing their hard work and rewarding their, their good behavior, i.e. completing lots of lessons. Here we have some examples of some more, I guess, manual gamification. The first one is something that uh, you, you'll get in every lesson, you know, when you're creating your interactive reinforcement or active learning, encouraging learners to uh, revise content within lessons by challenging them with questions. You know, this is gamification. The learner knows that, uh, that they're challenged with a question and behind that is the, their correct answer, which they will use to improve their score at the end of the lesson. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll get rewarded, they get a nice pop-up, the, the that's correct sound plays. And also you can apply even further gamification to this by customizing the amount of stars earned. Um, so you can see in the second screenshot there, the learner answers the question correctly and they get that almost Pavlovian three stars coming at them saying, nice job, you did it, keep going. Um, and even as they arrive on the slide, they can see exactly how many stars they're going to be rewarded for answering that question correctly. So it's a really nice way to, to make them feel like something's definitely on the line here. You know, if they're... Um, they come into the question, here's a chance to earn three stars. It makes it, it really brings in their focus. It really makes them want to do well. 
uh, and it's a great way to reward them for their efforts uh, in a real way uh, as well. Something you can also do on each of our interactive templates is add a timer. Uh, and perhaps if we have some time at the end of the webinar, if anyone's interested, I'll show you how to do that because it's, it's really easy. Any interactive question can be, uh, I guess, even more uh, gamified, even more overtly gamified by adding a timer. So learners have 10, 15, 20 seconds to answer a question. Uh, I like to do this in every of my, every one of my lessons has a timed template, at least one, so that I, my learners know that uh, they have to kind of be on the ball. You know, these templates, if they've got a timer on them, uh, they're usually worth more stars. So they know that uh, the extra challenge is worth it because they'll be rewarded better with those more stars. Uh, and also, um, it means that it's, it's just a lot more fun, a lot more challenging. Uh, perhaps if learners don't answer correctly because they ran out of time, that's again another way to encourage repetition of content because those slides are so valuable. Uh, even if they uh, maybe they uh, understood the content, well, repetition is always valuable anyway to get them to understand it. Uh, and they will be more likely to have to repeat the lesson when there's the time on board. So on the third image here, what we have it is an example of one of Ed's game templates because you know, while I said games in themselves aren't gamification, a game based around learning is gamification. It's, it's very heavy gamification. And all of Ed's game templates are really designed to encourage that uh, re reinforcement repeated over and over. So for example, in this game, a learner sees the same statement over and over. You can see they earn extra time for answering correctly. They earn extra points, bonus points for answering correctly. It's all about getting the learner to repeatedly see the statements over and over. And then on the right, what we have is the, the end game screen where they can see their current score, best score, how many stars they've earned and how many stars are available and the big play again button. And it's almost, you can see it's almost all pointing down towards that play again button and everything there seeing that, oh, they could try and beat their high score. They could earn some more stars. Uh, it's really encouraging them to repeat those, uh, that content. Uh, and again, every time your learner has that self-motivated repetition of content, it's just a little bit more um, knowledge embedded in their brain. And that's what all of our game for each is about. Uh, so we're just, we're going to go on to the star bar at this point, the, the feature that really powers um, that gamification. I'm just double checking the chat, see if there's any questions. Uh, there isn't so far. But again, if you have any questions uh, about the star bar, you know, perhaps this is a bit more complicated than, I suppose, the automated gamification where really you know it's automated, so there's not much for you to do. But if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, but with that in mind, I will go on to the next point. So, when the learner earns stars, they can use these stars as a form of currency, the chance to play games at the star bar. So, I am going to go over how to set up a prize draw later in the webinar. For now, I'm just going to cover off how the learner experiences um, the star bar, just to kind of carry on that thread of how the learner experiences all this gamification. So for the moment, just take it as read that a draw has been set up. And by that, I mean, um, there are some prizes for the learner to win. And don't panic, it's, it's really easy. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, you get to choose which game the learner experiences. So there are two games. One is a game of luck and one is a game of skill. So looking on the right, the top right there at the game of luck, the learner arrives on the slide, sorry, arrives on the star bar and presses play, spending one star on the chance to, to spin the wheel. Uh, if all four images line up, then they win the prize. It's that simple. So they can tell, you can see there, it says the next prize is an ice cream to actually US. So that's the next prize the learners that's available. That's what the learner is bidding for. So when they press play, they're trying to win that prize. Simple as that. Uh, what we have also is a, a game of skill called Star Bids. So in this game, the learner can swipe through the next three auctions that are going down. So each auction has its own unique time. And then they can go through the upcoming, uh, the next prizes and see uh, which auctions, which prizes will be closing in descending order of time. So the learner can bid any number of stars on a prize. Um, and once the timer ends on that auction, whichever learner has bid the most stars on that prize wins. So you can come in, uh, let's say I bid 30 stars on this worth gift card and, and you bid 45. Uh, in 30 hours time, you would win that worth gift card because you spent the most uh, stars on that prize. So anyone who bids on an auction, 
loses their stars. So uh, there's there's always a risk. It's not like you can just dump all your stars in a prize and if you lose, well, it doesn't matter. You've got them all back. So you have to really think about, um, you know, how are my coworkers big on this? Uh, perhaps it's a low value card. It's, it's, a, it's a $5 Starbucks card. You can get a coffee with it. You think to yourself, oh, maybe people aren't too willing to invest their stars in that. So you can bid 10 stars on this, whereas the $50 uh, iTunes gift card, a lot of people are going to bid on that, so you probably want to spend more stars on it. So this is where learners have to try and think about, you know, uh, how everyone else is playing. So that becomes uh, that sort of game of skill there. So if a learner wins a prize, if the auction times out and they've uh, bidded the most stars, if they do manage to connect those four images in the spin to win game, then they're taking on the prize claim journey, and it's the identical journey um, regardless of the game. So the learner is our Asked to fill in their name, second name, and just leave some advice for other learners. We'll look more at that in a second. And once they press claim prize, Ed immediately emails them uh, via the work email, which they've signed up with. It immediately emails them their prize. It says, well done, you, you've done great. And again, it's kind of that Pavlovian re reward. So as soon as they click that, they see that they the email comes through, they've gotten their prize, and it feels really great. Um, and, and people love it. I, I've talked to a lot of learners who really enjoy it. Uh, and you can see that coming through in, in the advice that people leave to each other. So uh, in the prize game screen, again, you can leave advice to the learners as they come through. And this kind of functions uh, as, a, as a leaderboard. So learners can go and see past winners and see what they've been saying. Uh, and you can see them really encouraging each other and getting really excited. Um, this also uh, really ma it makes things feel real for learners. So they, you know, perhaps they're unsure if people are actually winning. They can come through and have a look at the, the past winners and see who's been Who's been winning? I, I did talk to some learners and they were saying that what they would do is um, save up their stars and then when they're on break together, they would go through and see and talk about who's been winning uh, and uh, bid all their stars together and watch and see who's winning. So you can kind of see how th this really creates a lot of discussion around your learning content, which um, might not have happened in legacy e-learning systems, but in Ed, when you're deploying this this prize in gamification, it really offers a lot of excitement uh, within the company. Uh, and as people are talking about these prizes, then you know, they start talking about the learning content too. Uh, we also other, offer other ways of drawing people in uh, outside of this kind of social aspect. So uh, Ed sends automatic notifications uh, at the time that you decide, saying, hey, today's prize is the, you know, the $50 um amazon gift card and then so as people see that say oh wow you know i could use that they go in they earn some more stars and they start bidding at the star while trying to get that prize so it, it creates a lot of fun and there's a lot of great feedback that comes in here so uh very motivational uh, and it really powers that that star based um reward system that we have throughout the throughout ed throughout the lessons throughout assessing app, that sort of thing so i'm just going to double check if we have any questions what happens if people type for bids so uh if people are type for bids on the auction game then it, the prize goes to the person who bid first how is learners notified that an auction is currently active or coming up um, so like I was saying, uh, they get a notification daily about upcoming prizes. Uh, if they've participated in an auction, everyone who's participated gets a notification saying, hey, the auction's ended. Uh, and then they come into the app and they can see whether they won or lost. So hopefully that answers your questions about that. Um, what we're going to look at now is just managing a prize draw. Um, so the first step to actually managing a prize draw is deciding which game you want. We've kind of covered how the games work. Um, that will uh, differ based on your needs, whether you want that game of chance or game of skill. So to create a prize draw, the first thing you need to do is to create prize templates. Uh, you'll see these in action in a second when I actually take you through setting up a prize draw. Um, I, I did consider making a prize template and a prize draw, but I just thought that would take too long. So what I'm going to do is upload a, a video of me creating a prize template uh, and put it on YouTube, and I'll, I'll send that through to everyone who's attended. And if you're interested in that, if you want to use that as a reference, perhaps when you're creating your own prize templates, then, then it will work as that. Anyway, uh, very basically, a prize template. Uh, in Ed, we're all about 
helping you do things as quickly as possible, freeing up your time so that you can get on with whatever, whatever you'd like to do. Probably more work, but not not this work anyway. So that's nice. Um, so prize templates. When you're creating a prize draw, if you've got 30 uh, iTunes gift cards to upload, you don't want to write in iTunes gift card every time it uses this code. You know, This is the description. So we let you create these prize templates that you, you will end up using repeatedly. And then you can use them en masse to create large prize draws very quickly, very quickly. Um, so it's really valuable to always be creating these prize templates. Uh, these also allow you to quite easily um, tailor your prize draw to your learners. Uh, so if you were creating a prize draw for, for me and my nerdy friends, you would do something like create a Steam gift card for us because uh, you know we're all big gamers, so that would be really interesting for us. So this is a, a really nice way to even to tell your content to really uh, draw in your learners even more. Uh, so you can do things like use Ed's survey templates, send out a survey saying, uh, to your learners, hey, we've got a campaign starting up, which of the following prizes would be be most interested in? So that's a great way, you know, learners feel listened to uh, and the, the feedback then allows you to create a really nicely tailored prize draw to your learners. Um, and, and it'll kind of make sure that they're, um, they're more interested in the content as well. You know, they feel like they've been listened to and they want to participate now that it's part of something that they've built upon. So that's a, a cool way to use our survey templates as well. Uh, and these presents, yeah, they, they just allow you to make content so quickly. So set up a prize template. Again, you'll be able to watch the video if you're doing it yourself uh, later on, but very quickly, it's a simple process. You name the prize, you give it a description. So you, you see here, this is how the learner will experience the prize template in the app. Uh, they've got the name, the description and the image. So as they're scrolling through which prizes are upcoming, they can tell at a glance what the prize is. So they know to save their stars for that particular prize, that sort of thing. So you then um, enter the prize codes in other fields. So uh, each uh, gift card we have found, um, disappointingly, that there's no one standard for gift cards. Some of them use URL, some of them you print off a PDF, some of them have the uh, QR code. I, it's, it's, it's a lot of um, different things. But the good thing is we've made it super simple for you to use all these different prize codes and all these different um, gift cards in, that, in this one system. So you just tell us what the gift card users. Uh, in this example, it's a very simple uh, code. So you, you type in the code at checkout and you also they also have unique values. So we'd say, okay, this is code X12 whatever for a value of $20. And that's super simple. So others might have a code, a URL, etc. But you can add more fields depending on whatever your gift card is. So really quick to do. Then you also uh, set up a prizes email. Again, this means you're not managing fulfillment yourself. Ed automatically emails someone once they've won a prize. So this is a really a kind of set up a prize draw for an hour at the start of the month, if that, and then you can kind of forget about it until the next month, which is really nice. So uh, you, you simply say which email the mail should come from. So you put in wh whoever is managing prize at your company. You say the subject, congratulations, you've done a good job at learning, and then you enter in the, uh, the information down there. And that's the, the learner gets all that information. So really, really quick and easy. And, and once you set up the prize template once, it's, it's kind of a do and forget about it. So now we've talked about setting up prize templates, I'm going to set up a prize draw. So uh, what we're going to do here, I'm just taking us from the very start. We're at the home page of, uh, of the admin dashboard. I'm going to go to prizing up here, and we're going to select prize draws. And then we're going to press create new draw. And just like in every row of air, the first thing we want to do is name it. So we're just going to call it November draw. Uh, and here we want to select the game type. So uh, I, I guess to keep things kind of simple, um, you want the game type to match the game you've selected. So we talked earlier about how spin to win is a game of chance, star bids is uh, the game of skill. So the reason we have this configuration feature here um, is because particular user groups can have their own settings. Um, so you can say perhaps the the, the corporate, uh, the managers have spin to win game, the game of luck, and then uh, at a lower level, um, the, the sales staff, they have the game of skill, the auction. So that's something that you can customize if you want to. Uh, these probability fields will update as, as Ed's algorithm figures out the chance that people um, should be able to win prizes. So very simple. Uh, we've named the draw. The next step is to add a prize. 
And what we're going to do is draw in that Steam gift card. You can see here that we've got a couple of prize templates. These are all default prize templates to, to get you started on your first draw. Um, and you can see here that what, was, what the prize is searching for is the code and the value. So we've told um, Ed that an iTunes voucher requires a code and a value, and then it'll let us know who's won the prize once the draw is active. But you can see an example here how a Best Buy gift card takes a code, a value, and a URL. So this is an example of the non-standard non uh, gift card solutions. Anyway, what we're going to do here is input our first Steam gift card. So we, we bought these gift cards at the store, and now we're going to upload them into our, our prize draw. And let's just say, for example, this is our first code. So Ed is searching for a code as the first item. And now it wants the value, so I'm going to put a comma and separate that. And what I've done here is I've created a, a code for a ten dollar item. And I press add prize, and it's taken that in there and it's saved. Now again, it might be might feel a bit overwhelming at first, but it is really quick once you get into it. Uh, and if you ever have any questions about um, setting up drawers, then you can contact us or your ed account manager, whoever. I'm sure they'll handle it for you. To be honest. Um, what I'm going to do now is just uh, upload some codes in bulk just to show you how that can be done and also talk about how drawers tend to be set up. So while again, your Ed account manager, if you have one, might um, know more about uh, tailoring your prize content to your learners. What I found personally when I've been working in, in this kind of field is that uh, you want to have quite a lot of low value cards just to make sure that everyone can participate in the prize draw. And then you have some uh, high value uh, gift cards that kind of create a bit more buzz. You know, oh, today's the day when the $30 gift card is coming in and that sort of thing. And then you have one big ticket item, like $100, something like that just to really get the conversation going. You know, you can send out custom notifications to everyone to bring them back into the app and saying, hey, tomorrow the $100 uh, gift card is, is going to come out. Have you all got your, your stars up, that sort of thing. So it's a nice way of, um, again, you, you kind of can, can just uh, forget about it at this point. As long as you have that formula of 70% are the low value, 20% are medium value, and 10% are high value, then, um, you don't have to worry about that. The, the conversation will create itself as learners go through and see, oh, this prize is coming up, that prize is coming up, this sort of thing. So uh, as you saw there, I added my prizes in bulk, and, and that's that done. So that's the, this prize group set up in my draw. And you can see that's available here. Now, in a, in a I guess, a real draw, what I would do would uh, be to add a couple of different kinds of prize. Uh, people won't be too interested in earning the same prize over and over. So you want to use about three to four uh, different types of gift card at minimum, I would say. Uh, but again, that, you know, that's kind of up to you. You know your learners and you know if you've done the survey and you know what they want, so that's down to you. But uh, as a base, baseline, I would recommend about three gift card types per prize draw. So this is the area where you want to tell Ed how long the prize draw will last. So let's say actually we're doing uh, uh, a prize draw for the whole of December. You just tell Ed those are the dates, and this is when the prize draw will be active uh, and ready to participate in. And the great thing is, um, particularly for the game of chance, I have a fortune. So Ed knows that these prizes need to last for the whole of November, for the whole of December, because I've told it that that's the dates that this draw will last for. So you don't need to worry about you know all your prizes getting sent off on day one and suddenly. I know that the star bar is down for the whole month. Um, Ed, you can see here that the current probability to win an item is, is zero because, um, well, we're not in December, so it doesn't want to be giving out any prizes at the moment. Uh, but Ed will automatically calculate uh, which prizes should be given out based on a, an algorithm um, so that your prizes will last throughout the uh, throughout the month. Um, that's how it was in the game of chance. In the auction, um, Ed spaces out the auction so that the last item ends on the you know the 31st of December at half three in the afternoon um, for this item uh, and the rest of them are kind of evenly spread out from the start date so again this is just showing you that it really is just create it and then you can figure out about it something else you can do is set the prize draw to be just specific users so let's say uh, we only want our retailers to be able to participate in this prize draw then we just say here 
uh, we select this, this user group as the one who's participating. So you can set any number of user groups that you've created um, by any method. So you, you can do by area, by location, uh, that sort of thing, by whichever group. So there's a huge amount of custom, excuse me, uh, there's a huge amount of ways to customize who is uh, seeing what content. And what you can also do is just say, you know, if there's no selected groups here, then Ed assumes that everyone is meant to see it. So that's it. So we'll just leave this one selected for everyone. And that's my prize draw set up. So, you know, I don't have to worry about December, which is great. Just hopping back now into that presentation. Uh, we're going to be looking at prizes next, and we are nearing the end of the, uh, the presentation. So I guess just uh, while listening to me, um, keep in mind, it, start thinking of any questions that you might have about uh, gamification. Um, your mind can wonder if you want to think more about the important question you have. Um, and, and again, any area, it doesn't have to be about gamification. Uh, you can ask me about creating lessons, branding, um, user groups, that sort of thing. Anyway, uh, for recommended prizes in Ed, you know, I've talked a lot about the, um, the benefits of gift cards, and I really I can't overstate enough how nice it is to have the prizing fulfillment automatically handled by Ed. Um, perhaps any of you have had to manage fulfillment manually in the past will know it's, it's a bit of a, um, well, it's not a task you want to be doing. Um, and there's a lot of versatility in gift cards. You know, you can do things like buy gift cards for specific items from Amazon. Um, you, and again, you, you can customize the gift cards so nicely to um, specific groups of users that, that really that should suit your needs, suit your needs, I'm sorry. Uh, however, uh, sometimes people have used physical rewards and you know that that works too. Um, in that case, what you would do would be, um, you know, put in the, the physical reward, let them know what it is. And then in the prize email from the prize template, you would say, respond to this email to discuss your, your claiming the physical reward. Uh, and then you would talk it out with the learner who won um, about where it's to be delivered to, that sort of thing. Uh, it doesn't offer so much the immediate gratification as getting emailed a gift card that you can use right now does. Uh, but it, you know, you can get these really cool items that create a lot of buzz. For example, you know, an Apple TV. Um, that's another one that's going to create a lot of discussion around the learning content, which is really, really great. So it's uh, up to you whether you feel like you have the time to um, manage fulfillment of those physical rewards for, uh, versus the benefits they offer. Uh, something also to consider is um, you know, there are some, some people have used alternative pricing within Ed. So alongside the star bar, what some people have done is do things like count up how many stars learners have earned per month and then reward them automatically based on that. So you can see here, if a learner has earned more than 100 stars in their courses within that month, then they get the gold star level reward and so on and so forth, silver, bronze, and then down to nothing if they've only earned 69 stars or below. So this is a great way uh, of ensuring that every month your learners put in a lot of hard work. You know, you're not giving a prize to someone who's completed one lesson. Um, you, you know, they, they got lucky based on one star. Uh, if your learners are earning these prizes, it's mean they've gone through a lot of effort to get there. Um, it also means that there aren't learners who are left out. So if a learner has gone through and earned 100 stars, they're not, there's no chance that bad luck will hit them and they don't earn a prize. They, they've put in a lot of hard work and they, um, yeah, they're going to get rewarded for that. But again, th this is outside of Ed's automated pricing. And, and I can't say enough, uh, Ed's automated pricing is really great and we think it suits your needs, but we're just, it's, uh, I'm just kind of showing you that sometimes, um, you know, people like to get creative with their own reward schemes alongside Ed's pricing features, and that's certainly a possibility for you too. So it's something to think about. So that's the end of the presentation. Uh, I'm just going to hop into comments and see if anyone has any questions. Again, perhaps would anyone like me to um, to show you how to add a timer and customize stars to an interactive question? Maybe that would be useful. Um, so what I am, I'm just going to hop into doing that, um, now. And again, if anyone has any questions, just, just feel free to shoot those to me while I'm doing that. But if not, thank you very much for attending. And I hope you found that kind of overview of Ed's gamification features nice and useful.
Um, and what I will do before I go into editing um, the question template is I'll just put my email in the chat. So if anyone has any questions, uh, please let me know because I'll be really happy to help. So let's add some of that customization. Let's do it in the Spotify course. Uh, so here we have the chat template again uh, a nice example of the learning that we can offer you i don't know if you saw there but there was a star that popped up in the top so what we're seeing here in the authoring tool is a preview of how the learners uh, will see the content uh, and you saw there the star popped up uh, so it lets the learners know as soon as they're out on the slide they've got one star available now uh, every, every question is worth one star by default automatically we can say that if this is a particular important question then it's worth four stars and they see that animating at the top again then there's a lot on uh, on the line so they want to answer this one correctly uh scoring that's actually to do with testing so it's it's slightly different here uh, what we want to be looking at now is the timer and very simply you enter the time in milliseconds how long you want to learn to be able to answer the question you can see that timer popping down there's the the timer bar going on the screen up here and they've got to quickly select an answer. Let's just show you what happens now. I've given my learner 800 milliseconds, which I don't really expect them to achieve. But you see here, it doesn't know, too slow, bad luck, they don't get any stars. Repeat the lesson if you want to have another crack at it, um, which again is what we're all about. So that's the, uh, the end of the webinar. Uh, what I'm going to do is yeah, end it there. Um, I'll put in as well some useful links like the Ed Academy um, into the chat as well as the Ed blog. So these will all be really useful resources for you. And I'll send through a recording of this webinar and the video of um, setting up um, uh, prize template. So if you need any help with that, then you can refer to those. Otherwise, I'll say thank you very much for attending. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and I hope to hear from you soon.